On this movie, I'm going to show you how you create a vector item in Photoshop and then bring it into InDesign. So the first step is to create your vector item using the shape tool in Photoshop. So you click on the shape tool, then you click here to reveal the shapes and select one of the shapes. I am going to go ahead and choose the light bulb. Actually, since I did this in class, I'm going to select the heart just to, for consistency's sake. So now I have selected the heart, and then I'm going to go ahead and make myself a big heart. Next, I like to do this. I like to keep Photoshop and InDesign open at the same time. And I just simply click, hold, and drag into InDesign, which will do the following. It'll make a copy into InDesign. Then, if I wanted to put this text inside here, or if I wanted to see behind the heart, see how I can't see that because it has white all around, I need to get rid of this white. To do that, you click on the shape, to go to Object, and then what you want to do is something called clicking, Clipping Path, and then you go to Options, and then select Detect Edges, I'm going to select Include Inside Edges. And I'm going to click Preview so I can see what is going to happen. And when I inside, once I click Preview, you can see here on the outside now, instead of being white, it's now transparent. Okay, go ahead and click OK. And now you have a transparent. Okay, so what's going on over here, just so you know, when I moved it, I had the Direct Select tool selected. So if I want to move it, I got to select the move tool, and then I got, and then I can go ahead and move it by clicking and holding not the heart itself, but the frame where the heart is. So I'm going to put the heart in here, and now, just like in the other movie that I show you, I can do things like text wrapping. So that will go ahead and put the text wrapped around the heart. And I keep on selecting the inside. So just make sure you click outside. Then you click on your heart. And you can actually use your arrows if you want to control a little bit more where you want the heart to be moving. And you see how this text is going into here. You can also do the invert. So if you click invert and you put the text on the foreground, then the text, it's kind of hard to see, but the text will go ahead and be shown inside the heart. To illustrate this, I'm going to select my text tool. I'm going to select my text, and I'm going to change the color of the text to be something other than black, because right now it's showing us black. So obviously, black color will not be shown on something that is darker. So I'm going to select something lighter, then click away. You see how it's inside the heart? And if I was to select the text again, and I decrease the size of the text so that some of the text fits into the heart better, I can move the text box, and it begins to fill out the heart. And all I'm doing here, I'm controlling the frame as we discuss in class. And if you didn't go to my class, then I suggest that you learn a little bit about frames in InDesign. Click the letter W, and that will go ahead and show you a preview of how this would look like. But let's say that we want to create, instead of this heart, we want to go ahead and have it be a frame. I'm going to move the text to the side and click on the object. I go back to object clipping path and I'm going to convert this clipping path to frame. So now this right here is actually a frame. Meaning I can click on my direct select tool. I can move that and delete. That deletes the outside and this is now a frame. So when I bring my text inside here, I'm going to change the color of the text again so that you guys can see it. I'll select it black. And I'll also increase the size so you guys can see a little bit more. See how it's filling in the frame? So when you click 
preview, then it takes the path of whatever that shape is. And you can do things like, you know, optical kerning and playing with the spacing a little bit so that you guys can see how this works. You can even click justify all lines so that it spreads everything around and play with the size of the font so that it doesn't look so dorky. And eventually you can get a pretty cool effect depending on how much text you have. Okay? So this is how you work with shapes. Another easy path to this would have been also to create the vector shape in Illustrator. And for some reason in Illustrator, when you create a vector item and you copy and paste into InDesign, it, it understands already that it comes with a path. But on Photoshop, it does not do that. You need to do these extra steps.